Hi, welcome back to the Autumn Acorn Knits. My name is Judy and I come to you monthly to talk about all of the things that I have been designing, all of the things I've been naturally dyeing, and all of the knitting and crocheting patterns from other designers that I've been working on. I hope that you have something cozy to work on and a warm or cold drink depending on where you're living and let's get started. If this is your first time here and you like what you see, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, we have a little community of about 5,000 plus people and it's just a lovely, friendly, inclusive environment where all makers are welcome. Let's get started. Today I have three finished objects. I have a work in progress or two. Um, I want to share with you some acquisitions. And, and we have a 5K subscriber giveaway at the end. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that. So the very first thing I want to show you is uh, a double crochet blanket. This is a self-drafted, just very, very simple um, scrappy blanket using fingering weight yarn from many, many projects that I've already made or from mini skeins that I've received in an advent calendar or what have you. So I just take all those scraps and I put them together and I make these really fun scrappy blankets. And this one was the most mindless of any of the patterns that I've done before with just basically, like I said, double crochet uh, four rows and then two rows of single crochet and then you just repeat 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 um, I can show you where I was the last time that I podcast on episode 74 if you want to go back and see that um, but I had put a progress keeper here just to show you this is where I was and I have done twice that now so it doubled the blanket doubled in size also um, for the patrons I showed them how I like to weave in my ends so all of my ends were on one side and I like to weave them in uh, when I do my border around the entire blanket at the end and so I don't have anything to really weave in just a lot of snipping to do and I find that to be the simplest way to, to do it so that I don't end up spending, you know, a long time um, weaving in ends. It doesn't make sense to do that. It's a scrappy blanket. But I love it. I love how it turned out. And I want to make another one because I still have so many, so many scraps left. So that was a very, very fun project to work on. Um, my next finished object uh, is a new pattern, so if you have been following me for a while, you know that I wrote the Magic Heel Sock pattern originally several years ago, which has been a very um, uh, bestseller, I guess you could call it. And since then I've released many other Magic Heel Sock patterns using different weights of yarn for different size people. and. The latest Magic Heel Sock is a cuff down. I only have one uh, toe up pattern because I prefer cuff down. Uh, child sock pattern using fingering weight yarn because I already have one using DK weight. But you guys were asking for fingering weight. So I knit up a sample pair, which I'll show you now. Um, I used a mini skein from my Christmas advent calendar that I received from my friend Marie and then some um, sock yarn that I had dyed using indigo some time ago, probably last summer. Yeah, and so it has the traditional magic heel so that these socks can grow with the child and they were easy, quick, so quick. I think it took, they took me two days in total. Um, so yeah, I will be looking for testers. If you have a child in your life or a grandchild and you would like to test knit these Magic Hill socks, reach out to me and let me know and I'll, 
I'll get the test group started soon. I don't need very many testers for this and you only need to finish up one sock, so it won't be a very long test knit period, but reach out if you'd like to make Knit the Magic Heel Socks fingering weight for children, top down or cuff down. Oh, and of course I did use a US 1 2.25 millimeter. Uh, I use double points for all of my sock knitting, so that is what I use, double pointed needles by Zing. Okay, before I forget, I wanted to mention what I'm wearing, although there is no pattern for this top. This was a self-drafted tee. I had some linen yarn that I had purchased. It's a heavier weight linen, probably DK or worsted. And I remember just one day feeling like knitting something but not keeping track of it and unfortunately it ended up being um, a pattern that fits really well and I wish that I had written it down. Someday I might but honestly at this point I'm not so sure. Uh, I'll try to put the yarn information in the show notes for you along with all the other links for anything I talk about today um, in case you're interested, but I'll have to look up that information from a previous podcast when I first spoke about this top. This was a top-down tee. It has some, uh, ribbing on the sleeves, and, I mean, it's, oh, it has a pull. Look at that. I have an actual pull right there. Anyway, it's, it wasn't difficult. It was very simple stockinette, um, raglan. I think anyone could figure it out if they, if they wanted to. Um, so that is my double crochet blanket and my, <clears throat> excuse me, fingering weight magic heel socks. Now I'm going to put in some footage. Whoops, I just realized I had switched out my glasses and I really need to be wearing my real glasses, not my readers. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, anyway, the, the next finished item I've been working on for quite a while, all of this year. So four months plus. And it is my gravel pullover, which I have the pattern here. I'll show it to you. This is the gravel by Raylan Finch of No Lawn Knits. And this is what it looks like. It reminds me of like your favorite worn out sweatshirt with a funnel neck. So as soon as I saw that picture, I just felt like I needed to, to wear this. So I cast it on with Knit Picks palette in the color Comfrey, which is this beautiful um, heathered purple with gray undertones to it. Here you can see the funnel neck, which of course, you know, tightens up or loosens. Um, you could technically put it, roll it down as more of a uh, cowl neck too, if you'd like. And this is a top-down raglan pullover, fingering weight yarn. That is what the Knit Picks palette is. Um, I changed a few things, though, on this pattern. Here's the back. Uh, like I said, I'll put in some video. I probably am right now, so you can see how it looks on. It is oversized. There is positive ease in this, in this top. And I used US 5 needles, 3.75 millimeter for the body. Um, what else? Oh, the lining of the funnel neck is a Rowan Kid Silk Haze. That was in color or shade 589. And was that everything? Yeah, I knit the size medium. So that is size C. Um, bus circumference 53.25 and um, I cannot remember what the positive ease is but obviously there's plenty of it because it's supposed to be a casual looking sweatshirt type top. Now what I did differently and you can probably tell from the picture but I did not add in the sewn in faux seams at the end. I'm not sure if I will, but I might. They're, they're really cute, and I don't know if I'll do that or not. Also, my funnel neck is not as 
big as the one in the picture. I just had some, uh, the mohair was left over, the mohair silk, and I didn't have quite enough, but I'm really happy with this. I wouldn't want this funnel neck any higher or taller. Also, um, underneath, so she has you do this uh, weird seam thing on the underarms, like a grafting seam. With, it's a line, and I didn't enjoy doing that. Um, I have made m many other raglan top-down pullover styles, or even cardigan styles, where that I don't have any kind of seam or any hole and my underarms look perfectly fine. So I won't be doing that again and I don't even think they look that good and I have some holes there and I'm gonna have to go in and fix those. So I wasn't too thrilled about any of that process of doing the underarms for this. Uh, also the sleeves, they did have decreases in the pattern and I'm not, I'm not too <laughs> jazzed about that either. So I just knit straight and then did some sudden decreases at the end, which I really prefer that method anyway. I think it's easier and I think you end up with a cute, never too tight sleeve. Is that everything I changed? Oh, I also changed the bottom of this sweater. So the bottom is not supposed to be ribbing, but it is supposed to be um, this kind of pocket little pocket that you form at the funnel neck. You're supposed to form that same pocket uh, for the bottom and then put another um, one of these braided strings in it so you can tighten it up. I just didn't feel like doing it to be honest. I was ready to be finished. It's a really cute touch and I think for anyone who wants to knit this correctly it would be great. I'm so happy with the way this turned out though. Um, I do a basic bind off for my, you know, when I bind off my um, cuffs and my hems, but I usually throw in a yarn over on my knit stitches or at least every other knit stitch just to give it some stretch. I was very happy um, with the stretch on the bottom. Could have been better, but no trouble getting this on. And the most important thing is I was most nervous um, because I've never knit any kind of a turtleneck, funnel neck, style. I was really nervous that I wouldn't have enough stretch to get over my head, but oh my gosh, so there's plenty, plenty. I mean, that is some stretch. So doing that folded over seam really gives it a nice stretchy pocket. So very happy, very happy with the gravel. I know I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. I don't have any pullovers that are fingering weight. So I'm excited about this one and to to make more. I really want to make some more. So that is, that's all of my finished objects that I have worked on myself. So let me show you something that was a gift for me. As I mentioned, let's talk about a gift that I received. So I celebrated my 60th birthday um, on April 3rd and my lovely husband had been planning a surprise party for me here at the house outside because our house isn't that big. And of course we ended up getting all that snow, two, two big storms, and it just ruined his plans and the poor guy just had to rearrange everything. And We ended up having the party down in Connecticut, but my daughter came to spend a week with us from Hawaii, which was so wonderful. And she announced that she was expecting a baby girl in August. So we're just so thrilled for her and her husband, Javen, my son-in-law. So that was fun and exciting. And I'll show you how she announced that to me in a moment. But my son taught himself, he's an adult man. He taught himself how to crochet just so he could crochet his mama a hat for her birthday. And from what my daughters are saying, because he went to them for advice and help several times, you know, he he made this hat several attempts at it and had to start over at least three times. So I so, so appreciate the effort he put into this hat and it fits well and I think it's just fantastic. Now it's not perfect. There's a few errors in it, but overall, like I'll put in a photo of me wearing it overall. I was so touched and I don't even know 
I still haven't come out with the right come up with the right words to express how much this means to me, but I keep trying. So uh, while we're on the topic, I can show you what my daughter, how she announced the upcoming baby. So she crocheted me this beautiful heart, and I'm not going to button it right now because it's a little tricky to unbutton when you're on film, but it's this sweet little heart case, this little loop, there's the back, and inside she uh, crocheted this little baby, a pink bunting, and then there's a picture of the um, ultrasound photo of the baby, and there's a little metal tag on here that says August 2024. So it was a perfect, exciting, wonderful way to find out she was having a baby. Uh, we picked her up from the airport and the storm was so bad that we ended up getting a hotel and uh, so she gave this to me in the hotel. It was so fun. So I'll be planning a trip to Hawaii in the fall to meet my newest granddaughter. So that is that and then um, I'll show you now my works in progress. So let's see. Let's start with, this is a crochet blanket that, again, no pattern, just, just went with it. <laughs> I wanted a way to use up all of my thicker weight, so DK, worsted, and above yarns. So I'm crocheting this blanket, baby blanket actually, with all my scraps. And here's what I have so far. I love how the colors look together. I don't even know which side's the front or back right now. It doesn't matter. But I um, I really love how it's coming out. This will be a great blanket for baby to play on or lay on. And it's just some double crochet clusters. It's very simple, very simple. So I'm really having fun with this. And it's in my other bag that I made. This this one with the leather bottom. And this cool drawstring, which is my favorite part of the bag. It's, it's not a pattern that I ever released or even wrote down. It's just something I threw together when I wanted to use up some yarn. Some peace fleece, peace fleece yarn. But I have a backpack that I, um, that I wear. It's like a, in place of like a purse or a pocketbook. And it's the same color, so they look really good together. Also, I got this beautiful, I call it a project basket, from Depop. It was very inexpensive and, you know, loved by someone else first. Which is my favorite way to shop. But it's in beautiful condition. It's this really long strap. It has this wonderful canvas drawstring with little beads on. I mean, it's just so well made. And it's the perfect um, size for socks. So I'm just going to do a little sneak peek because I have some plans. I'm just going to show you the top of this second sock. It has a little ruffle and a cool stitch pattern. That's all I'm going to show you of the actual sock. The other one is finished. I used Tippy Tree Yarns. This was from a yarn de stash. Uh, this is a four ply sock, 463 yards, so very light fingering. And it's called Apple Picking. So, yeah. I'm using my double pointed needles. And this is what I have left of the skein of yarn. It's a gorgeous color. I'm, I'm really having so much fun with this color. So yeah, I will share what I plan to do with that sock pattern at some point, but not right now. Um, I also have plans for another um, sweater. So this one um, we're doing so. At where Marie, my friend and I, Marie, are putting on another knitting retreat next January. If anyone's interested, there's a couple spots left. And so we're all in an Instagram group 
talking. You know, all anyone going to the retreat will be added to the group so that we can all chat about it and get excited about it. And we all decided to knit the same pattern, which I think is such a great idea. So everyone decided on the Sea Haven by JST Knitwear Designs. And here is a very poorly printed photo of it because uh, I'm running out of ink, so it has lines through it. But it's a textured, uh, top-down, yoked sweater. I'm going to do mine most likely with long sleeves, and I'm probably going to be using my favorite yarn, Silky Wool. I have six of these skeins, which should be plenty. Uh, it takes me three skeins to make a short sleeve ranunculus, so six should be more than enough. Uh, I just have to gauge swatch and see if it'll work for for the pattern. So I'm excited about that. I paid seven hundred. Uh, I paid seven dollars fifty cents for this pattern. Uh, it calls for DK weight US six needles, which is a four millimeter. And yeah. So I mean, this is very close. The color. It's again a dusty purple. I should tell you it's color 78. Uh, this is 45% wool, 35% silk, and 20% nylon. There are 50 grams or 175 meters of this wool, which is by Elsabeth Lavold. But look how close it is to the color of my Comfrey by Knit Picks. Similar, right? Very similar. I think I like this color. <laughs> And silky wool doesn't come in a ton of colors, maybe like 10 or so. So, yeah, stay tuned for that project you know, sometime in the future. Okay. Moving on to... Since it was my birthday, I decided to treat myself um, to another charm. So I collect charms from Vintage Dreamer. She's the Vintage Dreamer, her name is Rebecca, um, and she has an Etsy shop called Becca Jan. I'll leave the link below where you can buy her hand-carved progress keepers and they're just adorable. She doesn't do updates on her inner shop very often. I wanna say two or three times a year, but she had one and I was right there on it. And here is the little package it came in. She always has them wrapped so beautifully. And I chose this time, I should say so far I have a pumpkin and I have a um, toadstool. And this time I wanted a gnome. And I hope I can show it to you properly, but here it is. Isn't that adorable? I love it so much. They're just precious and everyone is, is unique and one of a kind. So highly recommend this shop if you have a chance to check it out. She gives you the sweetest little business card. So it's flowers and then here's her information on the back but I'll, I'll leave that down below. So, super cute, I'm really happy with that. Also, um, at the last knitting function that I went to, which was put on by the New England Knitters group, um, they had a stash table, I think I mentioned this. So you bring a few items, you can take a few items. So this was on the table. And this is incredible because this is hand spun yarn. Whoa. So I'll show you, I'll pull out one. This is Romney yarn, 75 yards. Here's the cute little tag. And here is one Hank. Look at that color. It's so pretty. I love, love this color combination and these plies. And I mean, it's an entire bag. They're all like, look how much brighter that one is. It's got more orange. They're just so stunning. I was blown away that anyone would give this away. 
but wow, I feel very, very lucky to have it because the colors are just so incredible and it's hand spun and it feels nice. It's definitely rustic, but soft. I just love it. There, oh, uh, what's the total yardage? So we have 150, we have three, 450 yards. So if anyone has any ideas on what I can knit with this, I'm gonna say this is probably a worsted weight, M maybe DK, but DK to worsted. Let me know what you would make with this much of this beautiful hand spun wool because I want to do it justice. It's so gorgeous. I love it. All right, I think that we're ready to talk about the giveaway. So I put up a post uh, on my birthday saying that I was, I think I was maybe 10 or 12 subscribers away from reaching my longtime goal of 5,000 subscribers here on YouTube. And yeah, I did a little mercy plea <laughs> and you guys really came through. We, we met that goal and surpassed it. You know, I had no issues meeting that goal and getting past that goal. So that was so amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Some of you have said you've been with me from the very first episode and some of you just joined me today, but no matter what, I'm just so grateful for anyone who would take the time to stop and watch this channel. Like really, there's so many out there. So I thought I would try to reciprocate a little bit and give back. So. What I'm giving away is this pack, this care package here. So what you will receive uh, is this little craft journal. This is a candle that says, smells like I'm staying up too late knitting again. Oh, it's also called pumpkin spice. <laughs> and then there is a skein of my uh, naturally dyed with avocado GK weight Peruvian Highland Wool. This is what my patrons get each month is one skein. So you're going to get an exclusive skein. And then I threw in this skein of uh, uh, la la, Pearl Soho Linen Quill in the color Butterscotch. This is a fingering weight yarn and there are 439 yards in this uh, and 123 yards in the DK weight. So you can receive this entire gift bundle just by subscribing to my channel, hitting the like button on this video, and then I'd like you to comment. So I would like to know if you could answer this question, please. What is one thing you wish someone had told you about knitting or yarn before you started on your knitting journey? And this would also qualify for crochet as well. Just one thing you wish someone had told you, one thing you wish you knew before you started on your knitting or yarn collecting journey. Comment below, random number generator will choose a winner and then I'll announce it here on the podcast. Whew. If you made it through the entire video, I appreciate you very, very much. Um, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful ride here on YouTube, getting to know so many lovely people and just building this little community that we have. It, it, it brings me so much joy and so much pleasure. I'm an introvert and it's hard for me to make videos. I, I, I can be super awkward as you could probably tell or have been noticing in my past videos, but I continue to come back because of you guys, because of your comments, because of your encouragement, because of your support. So I wouldn't be here without you. And um, yeah, it means a lot to me. All right, I will talk to you all much. I will talk to you all very soon. Bye now.